Isn't that luxurious? That was for the porno music that's coming in later. Cruzy Cruzy Originals back here again with another big bagger project. We are working on a 2023 Road Glide, which we already put a 135 motor from Harley Davidson in it that we got up the road at Buddy Stubbs Harley Davidson. It should be nasty. It should be good. If you want to watch that video, they'll be out there somewhere. You can go watch it. Today, we're going to put on a bunch of random things. It's going to be a big test fit episode. We're going to test put a bunch of fenders tanks and just get everything mocked up for paint before we send it to paint. Uh, the guy came in, he came with a budget and then the build and kind of wanted to build something like the last bike we built, but then he went and bought a whole bunch of parts himself and sent them all here. And it's a bunch of shit that I've never heard of before, never seen. So I don't really know what I'm getting into. When I build a bike, I like to have control of the situation and I like to make sure that it all looks right and the stuff's going to be right and it's going to work together and kind of looking at some things this morning. I don't think a good amount of it is going to work together that well. But we're going to find out. If it doesn't, we'll take a different route. If it does, it'll be dope because there's going to be a bunch of carbon fiber, a bunch of motor, and a bunch of fancy shit on this bike. And I'm making it a real set of mid-control floorboards like my last Road Glide. I'm going to start with uh, unboxing a bunch of this stuff. It's from a company called Advan Black. I've never heard of them, to be quite honest. I gotta see how this stuff fits before we send it to the painter. Never ever trust an aftermarket body part from any company, no matter who they are. Always test fit it. Could be a bag lid. The packaging is nice. Everything looks pretty professional so far. Uh, these are lids for eight inch speakers. Uh, let's put those back in here. I will install the lids, but I will not install stereo shit. For one, I hate it on motorcycles. And two, I don't do it, so I'm not good at it. So I'm not going to do, you know, an inferior job that a professional could do. So I'm going to leave that shit to the professional. I'm definitely not installing bag liners. What's it going to be? Anybody got any guesses? It's the size of a gas tank, so that looks pretty. That is a really nice tour pack. I don't know how she fits up yet, but just looking at it, it looks really, really nice. Packaging is nice. The quality feels very nice. That gives me high hopes about fitting those saddlebag lids. I'm supposed to be putting these on with uh, an aftermarket fender and stock saddlebags. In China. Stuff is all made in China. I don't know what this is. Chin spoiler. It just really made me a lot less stoked <laughs> about doing this. Well, the majority of Harley Davidson is made in China now. I wouldn't have given these parts a chance. So maybe they'll turn out to be awesome. That looks really nice. Hopefully all this is really nice. This is like CVO, like a CVO chin spoiler. Front fairing, like a repop, probably. It's painted gloss black already, which is kind of wild. None of this stuff is what I need right now, though. <laughs> Damn it. I was looking for the fenders. It's like Christmas. I'm just opening presents and going to see which one is which. China. Found another one. Oh, I got another Christmas present here, buddy. I'm going to keep opening all of the... Advan Black. I wonder if this is the same company that makes Advan Wheels. Those are in Japan. Probably not. But Advan Wheels are the shit. This would be the docking for this guy right here. I'm going to stick him over here for now. You don't need to see that. You don't need to see that. Going in for another box. That looks like a rear fender. That's what I'm looking for. Who makes this? It's a Sly Fox. I like Sly Fox. They make good stuff. If it was another carbon fiber company, she's going to get tossed. That looks pretty good. 
Dude was talking, I got a FaceTime homeboy. He wants me to cut this shorter like my bike, but my bike had R bags and this bike has stock bags, so probably not gonna do that. I'm gonna pull the rear fender out. I'm gonna, actually I have it already apart, so I'm gonna throw some little nubs in this thing right here. We're gonna get her mocked up. Then I'm probably gonna mock up the tour pack just because if it's getting painted, uh, hopefully it's not getting painted, then I don't have to deal with that till later. I gotta find the front fender, get it mocked up, side covers, make sure everything lines up nice, and then we're gonna get homeboy on the phone, have a little phone conference, and kinda go from there. I've never used any Sly Fox stuff before. I met the owner at uh, our after party that we had in Durango. He was super cool. Their stuff looks really nice. It's supposed to be a nice test. It is a little on the thin side, but carbon fiber is pretty damn strong. I made carbon fibers for Dinah's a long time ago. Made a mold, all that shit, rear fenders they were gonna be. God damn, it was so much work. We canceled that really fast. This thing weighs like nothing. It's pretty amazing. I would say this weighs half a pound, maybe a pound. We'll weigh up the stock one. I bet we lose 20 pounds putting this stuff on. Everybody's gonna wanna know. What's the weight difference? What's the weight difference? Well, f don't know and don't care, but <laughs> I guess we're gonna find out. Definitely am gonna have to take the shock off. All right, well, one thing so far, the angles of this shit is different than stock because it will not clear the shock when it goes on. The stock one clears fine, so there's one little difference. It's probably just how the fender's set up. It's probably a lower profile fender, so it's gonna make it a little tighter to get in there. We'll see when we get it all together, but this dude doesn't want to do suspension right now, so it's stock. And the stock one, this, that adjuster sticks way in on that side. So it might be a bit of an issue because that guy seems to stick down quite a bit farther, but we'll get it in there and we'll find out. Suspension should always be the first thing you do. Always, always, always. Please don't judge me. I would never build a bike like this. This is just the circumstances. Wants to break the motor in first. While that's going down, save up money for the suspension because he wants to do some crazy shit like an inverted front end build and everything else. But it looks good. It's a good looking fender. I gotta build out the bag rails because this thing's gonna have to tie into this fender for the cross brace that comes across the middle and ties all this together. Those lights probably pop right into here. That would be awesome. Man, I bet I could get away without running a cross brace on this. We don't run them on ours. These are probably more aggressive than ours, so I'm just talking out loud right now, kind of brainstorming, because I don't want to put a cross brace in this fender. But... Those should be black. I don't even need that one anymore. I want to bolt this all up and see how she feels because normally there is a brace that goes under here and then bolts into the fender sandwiches and then braces these two together so they don't flop in the wind. But our bag reel kit is a different system up here. It's shorter, it comes down here. So you got a bunch more clearance and real short bags, not bullshit, you know, but it uh, it's just a one rail. We don't have a, anything that hooks them together and they're really solid. And these have two posts. This is boxed in aluminum. It's really, really solid. I think we'll run it that way. I'm just gonna get everything mocked up. I'm gonna put the tour pack on, I'm gonna put everything on. I'm gonna assemble the whole damn bike just to make sure that the whole damn bike, you know, assembles right. When she's back from paint, it is a long, meticulous process. It ain't just like uh, tossing her together like now, which you still have to be really careful this way, but not as careful. There's not as much tape involved, let's say. I'm pretty stoked on the way this fender looks. This thing looks pretty nice. This fender's getting my hopes up. Getting excited. Be 
another Sly Fox box inside of a box. Just my box in a box. What is it? I'm hoping it's a center console. Because I really don't want to put a stock center console on it. It's not, it's a fender. And it's a small fender. I'm happy with that. I'm gonna put this guy on next. This is kind of what I've been looking for. I really wanted to see both fenders on the bike. That is a carbon fiber Sly Fox front fender. Trent says it's not on the website, but he's putting it up there. So by the time this video is made, you can buy all these fancy carbon fiber parts, cruiseoriginals.com. Your one-stop shop for rad shit. Dude, this is sick. This thing is super light. It's gonna look good. I think I'm gonna put it on right now because I'm a little excited about it. What do we got for hardware? A whole bunch of shit. Isn't that luxurious? That was for the porno music that's coming in later. Thankfully, this thing's extremely light. I can probably pick it up with one hand and put it on there really easily. It's a gnarly process to make carbon fiber parts. I did it with a prosthetics company out here that my friend worked for. We were gonna make fenders like this a long time ago. And uh, I was just gonna make them with them. You know, be part of the labor. It sucked. It was like 10 hours to make a rear fender. This here is a Sly Fox carbon fiber fender. Looks really nice. That is actually the exact kind of style of fender that I like to run on the baggers most of the time. That short kind of looks like the Ness Sport fender a lot, actually, but in carbon fiber. But in carbon fiber, I like it. It's dope. This thing's coming along. I, I, we haven't gone over the paint yet. I hope he's not painting the carbon gloss. I like that it's satin and it stands out on its own like that. Especially if we did a gloss front end on it. What's next? Let me dig out another part. I hope there's a dash in here. I'm really hoping dash. It's part of the air filter. What's it gonna be? Please be a dashboard. Oh, a. It's a dashboard. I'm so thankful for this. It's carbon, that's pretty sick. This is exciting. The stock dashboard sucks. And you can't really do shit with them. Every time I powder coat them underneath where the, the badging is that goes down the center, it says like FLHX or whatever model it may be. That shit always boils the chrome when you powder coat right there. And I think it's from the sticky stuff being on it for so long. Even if you sandblast it and all that stuff, they seem to boil all the time. Dude, it has the rubber on it already, everything. This is a Sly Fox Dash. This will also be on cruisyoriginals.com before you know it. Look at that, that is sick. I pretty much need to tear it down for paint at this point. I need to talk to Ian, the painter, and get him over here and uh, kind of take a look at this. I'm gonna put the tank on and mock up that center console just for the hell of it. Make sure that it is proper if I don't have to have Ian like clean anything up on it. Set the seat on it. And then it's pretty much just tear it apart after that. So, gas tank on the ground. Put a seat on? I think we should. We just need some kind of fancy smaller black gas cap up here. Smaller black gas cap. More goodies. This here is a Cruzy Originals Step Up Tuck and Roll Tri Gripper made by Saddleman Seat Company. None other than the best out there. These are on the website. These are made to order. We sell a lot of these. This is the best riding seat on the planet. Especially if you're shredding in any way at all. This is the shredding seat. Shredding approved, shredding certified. This moth even got a backrest. Damn! I'm a little jealous. This thing came with an insertable backrest. Yep. around. This also is not a step up. I lied. What is this one called? It's got like 
the luscious seat for the wives' backsides, so it's not so treacherous on the undergarments. And the tuck and roll, all the good stuff. And it's got a spot for a goddamn sissy bar. That's sick. I'm jealous of that. I have never installed a backrest. There's that and that. I never did know that. Can you install a saddleman? Check this out. I've, ne I've never read the directions. <laughs> You're supposed to remove these. I did not know that. On 2014 and up bagger, these need to be removed. I did not remove these on mine. Yes, I did because I had the doodads for the crash bars. So I did remove them on mine. Other ones I haven't though. I'm gonna be honest. I didn't know. Goes to show you should read the directions to everything. Even the seats. Look at how hard that shit is. That's tuck and roll tri gripper right there. That's pretty sick. Man, all these things are making me want to build a bagger again. And then you just, it's got a little stopper for your angles. Dude, does it just pop down in there too? Bam, angle adjustments. Oh man, that's gonna be comfortable. Dude, the back is like the main thing that kills me. If I had a backrest for road trips, I could take naps. Seats on. Uh, I really want to sit on this thing. I'm, I'm really excited about there being a backrest available for one of these right now because any kind of touring thing I would want to ride that way. So check this out. She flops down. Oh, it still hurts. Okay. <laughs> Kick her up. Oh man, let me get up on this muff right here. She's adjustable. How do I make it come towards me? One inch spacer for it too that you can put on to push it forward. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to put the spacer on it. Because it needs to come forward a little bit. And I think these need a pullback plate. That would be ideal. And then you want to get off. Ah, better do yoga. Oh, yeah. God. Oh, I'm so sore. Well, she's comfy. Uh, this came with a one inch extension. I'm going to put that on. Or at least figure out how to put that on. Probably right now. I think I have to unzip the seat. But other than that, it's teardown now. Everything is kind of dialed how I want it to be. I haven't done the chin spoiler setup, but that is, I want to talk to the painter first because if that is final, I want to final assembly it. I don't want to put it on and take it off again if it's going to be that same paint, paint and risk anything with it. Uh, the rest of me tearing this thing apart, we're not going to film that. June's got editing to do, so I'm just going to get caught up on all of that disassembly. And then we'll get back on the rest of the motor stuff and then putting the mid controls together and all the crazy me make it type shit that's going on here. So stay posted, there's gonna be a lot of this. The spike's gonna be gnarly. And then we've got whew, an M8 Street Bob over there that's going just as hard. And then there's this spot that I already recorded right here and it's gonna be the outro. So here it goes. Rode a lot of stunt shows this weekend and two big street rides. Our Halloween hood ride was on Sunday. Video might be out or it's coming out. We did a stunt show for Modded Culture for the Sanctuary Drift event and car show. It was the biggest shit I've ever rode in my life, hands down. I've never rode in front of any kind of crowd like that before. It was amazing. Super dope show. We're going to do a bunch of stuff with them. More to come. National Stunt League is uh, about to make a real big appearance. And uh, like, subscribe, tell a friend, tell like seven friends. I mean, I need some parts for my Corvette, so holler at me. Peace! Oh, 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 oh